Hi, welcome to another IGCSC physics video. In this video, we're looking at section 1.13, part 2, which is air pressure barometers and manometers. There's a link to part 1 of section 1.13 if you want to learn about the general concept of pressure. In this video, we will learn about atmospheric pressure, barometers and manometers, and we will also look at some applications of pressure. Imagine one day that you were standing outside. Let's say that the sun had risen and it was early morning. There were no clouds and there was no breeze. However, we know that the earth has some atmosphere and that atmosphere traverses the surrounding of the earth. As you stand there peacefully on the ground, you know that the air is also surrounding you and that air is made up of nitrogen molecules and it's also made up of oxygen molecules. And we know that these oxygen and nitrogen molecules, they have some mass and therefore they also have weight because of the gravity that is pointed towards the center of the earth. As you stand there and do nothing, you feel like there's nothing around you because normally in our lives when we walk around or we just stand, we don't feel anything around us. However, let's say that you jump upwards. You do your hardest jump that you can ever do. And when you jump, you feel all that air that pushes downwards. So as you jump upwards, you displace the molecules that are above your head. And when those molecules move around your head, the molecules collide with other molecules and the collisions that are happening around your head, they create a pressure. We know that all matter has mass, so these particles also have mass. And since they are under the influence of gravity, they also have some weight. So we know that their weight is equal to their mass times the gravitational constant. But how is the pressure exerted on your head as you jump? When you jump the particles above your head, they're displaced by your head. So that creates pressure and you feel it as the air goes around your ears. Similarly, the particles above the ground also exert a pressure over it because we know that these particles are exerting a force or the weight on this area. And from definition of pressure, we know that the particles weight over the area, which is the surface of the earth, creates a pressure. The specific name for this pressure is atmospheric pressure. This atmospheric pressure that surrounds the earth is approximately equal to 100,325 pascal. But when we're talking about atmospheric pressure, we use another unit which is known as the atmosphere from the term atmospheric pressure, which is written as one ATM. So the pressure around your head is one atmosphere. However, if you go to a higher altitude, let's say that you stand on the peak of a mountain, the pressure on the peak of the mountain will not be equal to the sea level on which you were standing before. As you go higher in altitude, as you migrate from this flat ground next to the ocean to an altitude of let's say 8,500 meters, then the pressure will decrease. That's because as you're standing down here, the air is thicker, there's more particles around it, and therefore there's more mass per area. But as you go on top of the mountain, the air is thinner and so, and so the pressure of the air above you will be lower because there's less weight on the area on which you're standing. This is also because when you're standing on the ground at sea level, there's a lot more air that you have to pass through to get out of the atmosphere. But as you move to a higher altitude, the space is closer, which makes you closer to no air and therefore the pressure also reduces. Another formula from the last video we learned is pressure equals to the density times the gravity times the height of the air. Here we know that the height is greater because the distance between the sea level to the space where the atmosphere of the earth ends is greater than the height over here. So because you have more height over here, the pressure will also be greater. But here your height is lower, so your pressure will also be lower. As the point at which the Earth's atmosphere ends above you is closer to the higher altitude at which you're standing. But how can you quantitatively measure pressure? To measure air pressure, there's a specific instrument called the barometer. A barometer consists of an inverted tube, which is placed like this. You also have that tube placed in a trough, which you then fill with mercury. And the end of the tube is vacuumed, meaning that there's no air in that part. And the rest of the tube and this dish is filled with mercury. If you place that barometer outside, we know that you have air pressure. We know that the molecules that are in the air, they exert a pressure on the open sides of the dish. To balance things out, we know that as you place pressure over here, the pressure must also increase over here. So as the pressure from the air pushes this mercury upwards on this tube, by the height for which the mercury is pushed up the tube, we can measure how much pressure is exerted from the atmosphere. And of course we know that if you have this barometer at sea level on Earth, the standard atmospheric pressure is what you'll get, which is about 100, 1325 Pascal. However, to find the pressure using a barometer, we use the height for which the mercury is displaced in that tube. So this height that you get in this tube determines the pressure that we have. In fact, to the height which the mercury is pushed upwards is a measure of pressure for barometers on its own. 
We measure for how much height the mercury has been displaced. So the unit of pressure in barometers is given by the millimeter Hg. So the Hg is mercury and the millimeters is the height for which the mercury is displaced in the barometer. And this height, which is equivalent to the standard atmospheric pressure, is given by a height of 760 millimeters of mercury. But let's do a conversion of calculating the Pascal measurement of pressure from millimeters of mercury. We know that pressure is given by the density of the liquid. In this case, the density of the liquid is for mercury times the gravitational constant, which is for Earth in this case, which, and the height is gonna be the 760 millimeters, which is this height. So the pressure will equal to the density. The density of mercury according to standards is 13,600 kilograms per meter cube times the gravitational constant, which is 10 meters per second squared times the height for which the mercury is displaced, which is 760 millimeters, which is equivalent to 0 0.760 meters. And if we multiply all these quantities, we get that the pressure is equal to 103,360 Pascal. So this is pretty close to this. You always have some uncertainty. It's sufficient enough to use when comparing to Pascal measurements. Now that we know the new unit of pressure, which is millimeters of mercury, let's see what manometers are. There are two types of manometers. A manometer is an instrument similar to the barometer, but it's used to measure the differences in pressure between different gases. In this case, we're looking at a closed end manometer. So in this manometer, we have a U-shaped tube, which is made of glass, and here it's closed, so it's not open. On the other end of the manometer, we have a gas that is stored in a bulb connected to the tube. So that gas, when it pushes out of the manometer, it exerts a pressure down on this mercury. This closed end that we have here has no air and therefore it's a vacuum. Just like a barometer, we know that as the gas pushes down on this side of the manometer, the mercury is pushed up from this side of the manometer. This height difference that we get here from the pressure of the gas here, which is measured from this level to this level where the mercury is displaced, we can measure the pressure of gas X using the units of millimeters of mercury. And the changes in the height will show the difference in the level of the mercury, which will also determine the pressure in millimeters of mercury. So let's say that this height that we get from the pressure of gas X was equal to 40 millimeters. We know that the mercury has risen from this level to this level by 40 millimeters, and therefore the pressure is 40 millimeters of mercury. And you can convert that to Pascal or whatever else unit you want to convert it, like atmosphere. Now there's another type of manometer, which is known as the open-ended manometer. This is because instead of having a closed end on the manometer, we have an open end. This type of manometer is used to measure the difference in pressure between atmospheric pressure which pushes down from this side and the pressure that is exerted from gas X as it pushes down from the other end. So we know that gas X exerts a pressure over here. And due to the pressure of gas X or the pressure from the atmosphere, we know that the level of mercury in the manometer will change. In this case, if you have the level of mercury equal on both sides of the manometer, then the pressure of gas X will equal to the pressure of the air. However, let's say that the pressure of gas X was greater than the pressure of the atmosphere outside on the other end that was exerting pressure on this side, then the mercury will go down here and the level will increase from this side. Since the pressure in the gas is greater than the atmospheric pressure, we know that this mercury will rise to some level, so say it could rise to this point, and we can measure the pressure difference of this gas by taking the difference in this level and this level. So the pressure difference is equal to this height, and we can measure this height in millimeters of mercury. However, this is not the pressure of this gas. The pressure of this gas will be equal to the pressure that is exerted from this change in height plus the pressure of the air. So let's say that the changes in pressure were equal to 60 millimeters of mercury. And we know that the air pressure is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. And we know from this demonstration that the pressure of gas X is greater than the pressure of air. So the pressure of gas X will equal to the pressure that is from the change in the level of mercury, which is 60 millimeters of mercury, plus the extra pressure from the air, which is 760 millimeters of mercury. So the actual pressure of gas X will equal to the sum, which is 60 plus 760, which gives us 820 millimeters of mercury. So that is the pressure of gas X. Now in the reverse scenario, let's say that you have gas Y that is exerting a pressure on this side of the manometer and you have atmospheric pressure that is exerting pressure at this side of the manometer downwards. From this scenario, we can see that the pressure of gas Y is less than the atmospheric pressure because more of the mercury is being displaced on this side of the manometer. So gas Y is not exerting as much pressure as the atmospheric pressure from this side. So the pressure of gas Y 
can be used measuring this change. And let's say that this change in pressure is equal to 20 millimeters of mercury. This time, since we know that the pressure of the air is stronger than the pressure of gas Y, we have to subtract 20 millimeters Hg of gas Y from 760 millimeters of mercury, which is the pressure of the air. So the pressure of gas Y will equal to the pressure of the air, which is 760 millimeters, minus the changes in pressure, which is 20 millimeters of mercury, and that will give us 740 millimeters of Hg. And therefore, this is the pressure of gas Y, which is less than the atmospheric pressure that is pushing from this side. And this is it for section 1.13, part two. I hope you found this video helpful and you understand the concepts of air pressure, barometers, and manometers, and also their applications. Leave a like if you found this video helpful and subscribe for more videos in the future. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.